Hi, I'm Natasha. This is my work wife, Jean. Hi. We want to talk to you about the wedding planning process. I had a wedding. She had a wedding. Two completely different brides. Polar opposite. And we met because we work for Live Picture Studios and we help produce weddings, putting couples into the right photography, videography, and DJ packages, mm -hmm. which is a really personal experience. Yep. Welcome to our podcast. So, you're engaged. Now what? We wanted to put together a platform to be able to discuss what the wedding planning process is like, because we have both planned our own weddings. We went through the entire process. And at the end of it, you almost feel like you're an expert. You're a glorified yeah. event planner. Mm -hmm. But getting to that point is is a process. It's a it's a learning process. So there's a lot of research that goes into it. And. One thing that I want to say is when I got engaged, people gave me a lot of bridal planning books and we're working with a lot of couples that are working full time. Some are in school full time. And when do you really have time to sit down and read one of these books? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How much did you actually research? Well, <laughs> uh, research was done in the middle of work, going online. Uh, you know, when I could, I would look at Pinterest, then look at budgeting things and have a vision in my head. But then you have to go back and look at what you can actually afford. And you have like the what's in your mind and what you want to achieve and what you actually what's feasible for you. Mm -hmm. In my own experience, had a, having time to sit down and actually read a book and organize myself, I spent a lot of time driving from, you know, one point A mm -hmm. to point B. So having had something that I could isolate and say, oh, gosh, I have to pick my wedding photographer. Let me see. Let me listen to it while I'm driving or while you're doing things, while you're getting out of the shower and putting your makeup on to be able to just delve in and get some insight on what it is that you're about to do. Mm hmm. What did you feel? So I guess I'm a traitor to my industry, but I did zero research. I talked to friends. Who did they use? It was word of mouth for me. That's so great. a girlfriend, if she used like five, you know, a couple of my friends, which florist did you use? Which florist? Then I'd go to the website mm -hmm. and then I'd investigate. And then that's how I ended up ultimately choosing, you know, the person that I was going to be using for my flowers, you know? So it's, um, for me, it was, it was a very, very different experience. And I feel like that is very common with a lot of the couples that yes. we meet with yes. is resources are everything. Even if it's an online platform where they're bonding with hundreds of brides that they've never met, who's worked with which company, what their experience was, how to negotiate, what to ask for, who to ask for. You know, there's so much information out there. Well, I think that's the thing. It could be, it, it, it becomes overwhelming, right? So then it's just a matter of, um, it's, it's a trust aspect, right? That's so, right. My best friend, if she says it's good, that's what I'm going with. Because there are just some people that they see all these all these resources in front of them and all this information. They don't know what, what to move forward with. You know, everybody's a different type of bride. You have a bride who has an a exact plan. They've been planning this since they were seven with their mm -hmm. best friends. Yeah. And now it's the time to implement it and, and follow through with their dream. Mm -hmm. You have brides that have that vision but necessarily don't have the resources to make that happen. So everybody's different. And we meet with so many different brides, people that are organized and tell us what they're looking for. People There's a who term, have professional brides. That's right. Yep. People mm -hmm. who have no clue whatsoever. They just heard that they should, you know, be meeting with, with a photographer, be meeting with a possible videographer. So, and they don't have any direction or, or knowledge. Mm -hmm. So everybody's at a different place. You and I had completely different very weddings. Very different weddings. Very, I was just going to say, our weddings were completely polar opposite. That's right. So so talk about your wedding. I mean, I would say, I don't like to use the word typical, but um, it really was, it very much was an East Coast wedding at the time. I got married in 2015. I'm from Staten Island. And, you know, you have to, 300 plus guests sometimes, um, $5,000 wedding gowns at Kleinfeld. Oh, wow. Yeah, crazy. Was it the 
label of Kleinfeld, the experience of saying my dress is from Kleinfeld that was lot, important yeah. to you? Or was it actually finding a, a dress? Lot, that- a, a, both. A bit okay. of both. Yeah. Where, again, friends, where'd you get your gown? Kleinfeld. Okay, I'm going to Kleinfeld. Got it. For a, a completely opposite end of the spectrum with my gown. Yeah, like what was that? A, how much was your gown? So, okay. <laughs> how much was my gown? So originally I bought a gown on eBay. I spent a full $100. Woo, whopping. And it came in. And it fit perfectly. I cried when I put it on. I put it on in front of my boss. They cried, uh, he and his wife. And it was fantastic. So there was something about it that since it was only $100, I didn't validate it that this was the gown, even though it was so pretty and I loved it. So I had that. I knew I had that checked off the list. But then I had gone to look for accessories at David's Bridal. Walking through, went to use the restroom and found this hanging pink monstrosity off the, <laughs> off of the hanger. <laughs> and the blush pink, and went, the blush pink oh, gown. Oh, that's different. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, old fashioned values. I, <laughs> that's a contradiction. I already was a mom when I was married. So mm-hmm. there was something about that thinking, well, maybe white isn't the, isn't oh, the virginal, you know, color okay. to, for me to wear. So when I saw that blush color, I thought that maybe that was more appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was very pretty. So I tried it on and it was sort of that it factor where I loved it. And that, I think it cost me $650 and I felt it was. Oh my God. That was, that was the, that was less than the cost of my, uh, my alterations. And then after the dress was, after my wedding was over, I went to Kleinfeld to get the dress preserved, $900 to get the dress preserved. Just to have it preserved. Just to have it preserved. So it's now in a box. It's now in a box. And the box is where? In the attic. Um, and what will you do with this? Will you so, do a tree skirt or a, a christening gown? So a christening. <laughs> if I have a little girl, communion, christening, something like that. I mean, I have to put it to use in some way. Okay. Yeah. You know, do you really have to spend that much money on a gown? No. I think you, you could find a beautiful gown. But, you know, it's Kleinfeld and... That's the experience, the name, the, experience, the status. The name. Mm-hmm. So dress is one thing. So what was next for you in your East Coast, um, Staten Island style experience. wedding? <laughs> um, hair trials. That was okay. a big thing. I must have gone on like, I mean, I don't, this is, I'm speaking from my, you know, my own personal experience. I mean, I, I can't say every girl from Staten Island goes on multiple hair trials. I did. Uh, I think I went on like five different hair trials I spent and each one a buck 20 at least that they're charging you so that wow. was ridiculous that was probably part of my anxiety okay for, for the day and um and you did multiple hair trials I because did. you didn't get it right so you I, wanted right. to try new things okay exactly and Different. did you bring in pictures mm-hmm. from yes I did uh, that I would go on Pinterest for things like that okay yes I type in like you know um half up half down um or the style of dress once you found your gown what's that's the right. appropriate up, yeah. down, that type of thing. That's right. To go with strapless gown. gown. So naturally, I think I felt like I wanted my hair to be up. Okay. Um, so that's kind of like where, how it segued into having hair trials after the gown. Mm-hmm. Now your hair trial experience. So there wasn't a hair trial experience because remember I- Oh, I that's right. Planned this. One thing about budget for our wedding is being that I was already a mom, mm-hmm. I could not justify spending an enormous amount of money on- Yeah. A one day event Mm -hmm. because my priorities had shifted. That's right. That being said, I deeply regret many decisions that I had made during my wedding. I wish I had gone in a different direction, invested more uh, because it really was a special day and I have barely any memories of it. So when you say, okay, so deeply regret, what what was the biggest regret in terms of the planning? Okay. So one of the things is we didn't do a video. We had a friend do the photography I didn't even shop around for photographers. Eventually, initially I did. I would go through whatever the knot had listed and look at them. And then as soon as I saw their starting pricing, I was very intimidated going, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, $2,000 for a photographer, but I haven't paid for this or that. And do you know, this is how much is this wedding really going to cost us? Mm -hmm. So I was getting overwhelmed. Meanwhile, I had two friends that were wedding photographers. This is what they did. So I had asked them both, uh, you know, it's not that I don't want you to attend my wedding, but if you were to shoot my wedding, what would it cost? Mm-hmm. And one gave me a, a pretty hefty price. She she said it was going to be 3000 That was with an, without an album. And she was 
a starting photographer. Uh-huh. So now I know that that was quite expensive for that, yeah. that time for somebody who really hadn't established themselves. The other one was like, well, I'll do um, 800 uh-huh. and I will do your prep and your ceremony. But your reception, uh-huh. I'm going to be attending. So I'll shoot what I can. Oh, no. It was one of those. I would never. Was that a friend? That was a friend. Never. Never, she never. was a friend. So a friend. what did I know? I, I thought, oh, everybody is going to have their cell phones and take fun pictures at the reception anyway. So I'm fine with that. And so she did. She she got fantastic pictures of our first look, which were my favorite of the whole day. Uh, the ceremony came out lovely. She did get some fun shots of the reception when she could, but mm-hmm. she was enjoying herself as well. Mm-hmm. So that was a huge regret is these are my memories. Um, I didn't have a video. My father has since passed. My son was five. He'll never be five I, I again. I remember you telling me you were asking, you were hunting people for their iPhone footage. That's right. Walking, we made a hashtag, walking down the aisle, which is like. We made a hashtag of our wedding and said, you know, anything that you've taken, please, wow. please post wow. to this hashtag. As a matter of fact, my husband interrupted the, the reception to surprise me with a couple of songs that he had prepared uh, and sang to me. Mm-hmm. And we heard the song the other day. And I said, well, hey, that's we have like no video of this, do we? <laughs> and he's like, you know, oh, I feel no. like somebody may have put it on our hashtag. Let's mm-hmm. see if our hashtag still exists. That's right. This was just last week. And so we put the hashtag in on, on Facebook. And there it is. We found the video. And it is, I have to show it to you. It's completely black. Uh huh. <laughs> you can't see anything. You see like a little bit of a shadow figure and then you could see, you could hear him. Yeah. Of course, not the best quality sound, but at least we have something. But I always think to myself, gosh, had I just taken the money and, and reasoned to invest in right. a great video, I would have that memory forever. Mm-hmm. Because essentially what you're doing is you're making an heirloom for your family with your memories. Absolutely. You, this is going to be passed on for your kids, for, for your parents, for your siblings, they're all part of it. And now they have something that they can cherish as well. And we did things simple and I regret it deeply. Yeah. So did you actually make a spreadsheet or did you, see, I did. I actually, like, I, I, I literally, the, I think the moment I got engaged, I wrote down step by step, okay, these are the things I know I want to start looking into. That's very smart. That's that's like one of the first we, things that I actually did. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I did everything in the right order. Like looking back, I could definitely advise a bride now, listen, get the big things out of the way first. First get the venue, mm-hmm. um, get your photographer, get your cinematographers, get everything secured. And then you can kind of work on yourself a little bit. You know, one of the odd positions that we were in was we really didn't know what our family was going to contribute. Mm. It was, in in my mind, I had always thought that, like, the father of the bride will will just yeah. go ahead and pay for the wedding. And I didn't have a, I didn't have the relationship where I felt very comfortable saying, hey, what are you paying for? How much? What can we expect to budget? Yeah. And I waited and waited and I kind of waited for him to come forward. And my parents are divorced. Waited for him to come forward and, and say, you can count me in for X amount of contribution. And my mom did that. And, and it was small, what she could contribute. Same thing with, with Frank's mom, what he could contribute, what she could contribute, she did, which very, wasn't very much to count on. Yeah. And my dad really didn't. He, he didn't contribute anything. And I never put him on the spot and asked him. I just, I had asked him how he wanted to be involved in the wedding, sort of in a beat around the bush way. And he said, well, I'll be there, honey. And, you know, if you want me to give a speech for you, I'll give you a speech, give a speech mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. And that was it was hurtful in a way, because in my mind, I envisioned him kind of taking over and, and doing his part. And he gave us a check at the wedding, uh, which was a nice, you know, helped us recoup some of our money. And uh, and that was that. So so we were in the category of couple where we paid for our own wedding, as we often will talk to couples and they will say, well, I'm paying for the wedding on our ourselves, that in our minds go, okay, they probably are working with a very limited budget and probably looking for more simple. You know, I, 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 I empathize with them. You know, it's, it's tough to come up with all this money in, you know, typically a year, a year and a half, you know, mm-hmm. and this is what these, these young couples have to do. That's right. Um, it's a high stress situation. It creates a lot of stress. Anything so, financially anything typically financial. does. So when you meet with them, sometimes they're already stressed out. 
sitting down in the chairs with and you. And what was your experience with finances with your family? I mean, you know, it's 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 a very cultural thing. A big Italian wedding. John's sister, my husband's name is John. His, you know, his sister had the wedding that we had. You know, his, so his, in other words, I guess you could say that John's parents and my parents were very familiar okay. with the cost to begin with. They budgeted it when they got pregnant with you. We're exactly. having a daughter. <laughs> you know, save up. Exactly. Never I mind mean, college. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back, um, I would say that John and I paid for about half the wedding on our own and the other half uh, we were gifted. And did you pay for half on your own because of the level of wedding that you had? Your, yeah. I okay. Mean, so your parents were my parents prepared to me. contribute That's for a right. certain level of wedding, but you guys right. took it up. And That's right. Put I in mean, the rest. They couldn't hand me, you know, $80,000. That just wasn't going to happen. Um, what did your wedding cost? Just about that. Eighty thousand dollars, and that. that was inclusive of your gown and no, that so was not including my gown. How much was your gown? My gown was about five thousand. Okay, um, I paid for about a little more than half of that. Was um, it worth it? No, absolutely not. Okay. Now that I'm a mom, and now that I own a home, my priorities have completely shifted. Like just like what you just said. So mm-hmm. looking back, there, I would have put my money. I would have still had. Um, I would have still had, a, of course, a wedding. I would have had a big wedding, but I would have put my money in different different like places. Um, I would have had a smaller guest size for sure. I see. So maybe a venue that was a bit smaller. How much money did you recoup? Half. Wow. Yep. All right. Yeah. Again, you talk to friends and you ask these questions. You know, how much did you guys spend? How much did you make? Mm-hmm. Generally, people break even, at least my group of friends. Or, you know, you, you might lose a little bit of money. Depends on what you want to do. I mean, if, you're, if you decide to spend six, $7,000 on flowers that get thrown out at the end of the night, you know, um, you don't put that money in maybe something like, you know, more money into the uplighting or DJ or like something, you know, your photographer, a better okay. album, things like that. And what did you spend on flowers? I spent about 5500 Okay. And that was your bouquets, mm-hmm. tables, yes. centerpieces. Yes. Yep. Probably at the altar as well. Did you do, do flowers for the church? Flowers for the church. Okay. All of that. Yeah. Bouquets. Yeah. For the girls, everything. Wow. So I think I probably would not have put as much money in, in that now. You mm-hmm. know, if I was having a wedding today, I would go very simple with something like that. Okay. Would you have chosen the same venue? No. Because now I'm much more into photography. I've learned so much more about it. Uh, I think I would have chosen not so much a hall, maybe something outside, um, like more of like something like a, a botanical gardens type of a settings, you know, I see. something prettier. Where you can incorporate a lot of the environment. That's right. Why did you choose your your venue? We knew they treated us very well. We knew the owners. Um, we were hoping to get a better price. We knew the food was great. We're all mm-hmm. about food. We're Italian. So, I mean, that was a big thing for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think, you know, just having the familiarity, knowing people that have had weddings there, um, and it's gone very smoothly. We were just really comfortable. I actually didn't shop around for, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to many venues. Okay. I didn't. I, uh, and you know what? I was a bit overwhelmed with the whole process. And again, just knowing, knowing them, knowing that they do a really good job. I was comfortable kind of just diving right in and, and working with them. But yeah, I would have scaled down a little bit. I would have put money in different places and, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of a different environment. I would have done things totally different looking, you know, looking back now. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. I still loved my wedding, don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. I would have had a much more intimate setting, Affair. intimate feel, yeah. And how much of your insight and experience that having planned your own wedding and having things that you did right, things that you regret, how much of that do you advise your clients? I'm very honest with them. I, do, I mean, they come in here, they, they're, you know, they're looking for, they're looking for video services. They're looking for photography services. They're looking for DJ services. And I mean, our job is to capture memories, right? We just mm-hmm. spoke about how important memories are. So, um, and I just said, I would have put more, put more money into something that I can, I can take away with me, right? Rather than flowers that they're going to throw into the garbage at the, at the end of the night. Sure. Because you're going to need that money one day, right? That's right. Um, so when, when they come in, I always tell them about, you know, my experiences. And I say, I say, keep it about yourselves too. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop involved, stop getting so, um, uh, caught up with what, you know, I don't like to use the word family. It's like a fine line, but you know, with other people, what other people are saying and, and getting influenced and, and just sit down together and decide what's the most, what's most important to you. Okay. So ask questions. It says a lot about life and it, where we end up in does. life as well. 
It does. Ask questions, do your research, take a little bit of time if you need it. You'll have a great wedding. Nothing to regret. That's what I tell them. Sure. That makes that makes a lot of sense. What I would say about that is, I mean, complete opposite for our wedding in mm -hmm. every way, shape, and form. Uh, the flowers, we knew a florist who got us into where he buys the flowers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a Fort Knox. You can't get in to buy flowers because they know brides are going to want this opportunity. So he took my sister. They knew what I had pulled from Pinterest and whatnot. And they went a couple days before the wedding and they made the purchase of all of the flowers. And then the day of the rehearsal dinner, we had an assembly line. He taught us how to make each centerpiece and how to make each oh, bouquet. So sweet. And yeah. we had everybody in the wedding party lined up with family members, just, you know, doing one after another after another. And then we we had the flowers ready. Then it came to, okay, it's the day of the wedding. Where's the flowers? How are they getting there? How are they actually getting to the venue? Because we took it upon ourselves. We didn't have the florist to set everything up. So that was the flower scenario. Uh, talked about the dress scenario. Then that was that was really it. Our venue was a restaurant that was a very high-end restaurant. We knew the owner. Okay. And a family member of mine had mentioned, why don't you speak to... Uh, his, the, the owner's name was Francesco from Italy. Uh, why don't you speak to Francesco about having your wedding in, at Cafe Sapori was mm -hmm. the name of it. And it didn't, it seemed completely unobtainable because it was one of those like once a year you go to dinner here. It's oh. very high end. And how many guests? Uh, we had 100 on the nose. See, that's nice. Yeah. Perfect. And, and you knew everybody there. And we knew everybody <laughs> there complete, and, and knew everybody very well, like have a history and, and, mm -hmm. and connection with everybody there. So we were we were just very resourceful. We met with Francesco. I said, you know, I don't even know if we can meet with you. We're not the Rockefellers. You know, I'm planning the biggest event of my life in a very expensive restaurant. I don't know if I can do this. He said, well, Florida is a very seasonal place. You are getting married while it's still off season uh -huh. and I could use the business. So oh. what do you want to spend per person? And so do you remember what that cost was? Uh, yeah, it was. I think we gave him for 100 people. This is what <laughs> you're going to freak when I tell you this for food only. I think it was 50 bucks a person or Stop. 55 a that's person. That's unbelievable. We provided our cake. We also provided. Alcohol. Did you we, he allowed us to bring in our own alcohol. Oh so what we did was a very close friend of mine owned a restaurant at the time. He His restaurant was not available for our wedding because that was my first spot. Like, okay. you know, okay. it's very sentimental mm -hmm. there as well. And he had ordered all of the wine and beer from his vendors uh, that he gets for the rest mm -hmm. or his restaurant. So we were able to get everything at cost and everything outside of that I had gone to a big wine store and filled up carts ready to spend a ton of money on, you know, to fill in what wasn't the wine and beer that I had gotten from him. And my dear friend who had flown in from L.A. for the wedding had asked, oh, where are you? And I said, oh, I'm at the wine store getting everything for the wedding. And we're talking <laughs> two, three days before the wedding. We did it all. So you did all of this. We did it all. So she came to the wine store. And as the pe person is checking out she paid for it she i'm gonna get teary-eyed <laughs> she paid for it oh my god because um you know she didn't she didn't know what to give us for our wedding as yeah, a gift so yeah. anyway That's she, awesome. she took care of the tab so that was like That's super amazing. super sweet spreadsheet wise we did a spreadsheet after the wedding to see if <laughs> if we recovered our money. No, did and you? we did you like did. to the dime That's yeah amazing. so oh, we so were you broke even or you actually made money we're talking like within a hundred bucks, we broke even of <laughs> what we spent at the restaurant, alcohol, dress, his tux. I mean, do people actually make money on a wedding today? I feel like they do. Uh, it, listen, I'm sure, some, our, I'm sure some people think do. about it. Some of our clients are that's right. five, six, seven hundred guests. That's right. Deep. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that it all depends what they decided to spend, though. That's right. You know. Your wedding is the, the intimacy of it. Because when you and I have reflected in the past on our weddings, mm -hmm. um, you smile, you get emotional. I, yeah. mean, that, it, I mean, it's it's amazing. It I is. Have liked biggest to have regret some, is the memories. That's right. I would have liked to have something like you, except I definitely would have invested money in 
um, better, more uh, right. thorough photography and, and definitely having a video. Right. And being more organized. Yeah. I wouldn't want to worry about it was stressful the aspect. And I mean, those things, you, I mean, you really, you don't want to have to be thinking about things like that. That's a little stressful. That's right. And on top of that, being a mom at the time and working <sighs> full time and yeah. being an actress and going back and forth yeah. for auditions. So it was when you need to, you figure it out. You mm-hmm. always figure out how to handle everything. Right. So, yeah. yeah, that was it. It was a very different experience yeah. than than your wedding, but a lot of the brides that we work with. So that's why I I definitely connect to people who are very simple and yes. don't have much to work with, but they I, I try to get them to understand that the value in in your memories. Um, my father said something to me that was very important. Um, he said to me, "Things in life are such small investments if you think about." what the value in is in it for later. Right. He's like the memories that you're going to create in these two weeks away and the experiences that you will take with you. This is pocket change. When you think of it in the long run, you'll figure out how to pay for it. You'll figure out how to recoup your money, but don't pass up on the experience because that regret is not worth it. That's right. So in hindsight, yeah, with the wedding planning, I would have figured out how to how, how to, to make do it yeah reallocated money here and there that's right yeah so basically just i think the lesson i took away from it is staying true to real what you really want putting your money into what the things you really really want to put your money into mm-hmm. um and really not putting your money into things that everybody else is doing personally that was my personal lesson during my wedding planning process that makes sense when i look back on my wedding and i actually see it i see it in the videos it was so hectic the planning and like I said, trying to keep up with the Joneses. I always say that. Mm -hmm. Um, But during our photo session, um, him and I, it was our photo session for for us. It was very intimate. I I just remember feeling like, okay, um, even though, you know, my photographer was giving us some ideas how to pose this and that. uh, He was great. He made us really comfortable. I just remember looking at him and he was looking at me and, you know, I, I remember, I think it was, the, I think he said it to me. He's like, we did it, babe. We did it. Aww, we're here all these months. The energy. The so energy you did your photo great. session after you were married? After we were married. Okay. It wouldn't have mattered to me if we had a first look or not. It, just as long as we had some time. Alone I gave us I gave us a lot of time in the day. Okay. It was over a 12 hour day because I knew that it was going to, it was crazy. There was four locations, his house, my house, the church, the venue. That was very smart. It was so, it was so hectic and, and time is so valuable. I've learned that. I tell all of my clients that, you know, stop booking things back to back. I yell at them. I'm mm-hmm. like, stop, you need the extra hour. This is crazy. What if you need to tie your, you fix your heel or what if you just want to drink a water or, or breathe for a second? You don't want to look back at your day as being a no, stressful experience. No. So I knew with all the, everything going on, how crazy it was. I just wanted to have extra time. And I wasn't even thinking for myself and my husband. <laughs> I just thought just to relax or, 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 you know, but that photo session was awesome because it was, it was something intimate for the two of us before we finally went into, you know, the ballroom where everybody was and mm-hmm. they were going to be pulling us in different directions. And you know, we did have our time. That's great. So you guys were in your own skin. We had, just we connecting. Had a, yes, we were. We were. Um, and then the honeymoon was a whole other process. Did you go on a honeymoon? We did. We did. We Where took did a, you go? We went to Dominican Republic. Okay. Yeah, we had a great time. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. But we took a week in between because mm-hmm. ju- I couldn't imagine planning the wedding and having to pack for a trip and organize yeah. leaving the house yeah. before we took off. So we took a few months. Oh, yeah, wow. We did. We did. Staten Island style. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just needed to, um, I needed to come down from it all and relax. A few months. So yeah. how long did you take? Well, the wedding was May and the honeymoon. Oh, you took a few months before you left for your honeymoon is what you're talking yes. about. I thought you said you w- went on your honeymoon for a few months. Oh, no. I'm like, okay, baller. <laughs> I mean, amazing. I would love it. But no, it must be nice. No, we went for two weeks, though. Uh, my husband's a teacher, so he was able to do it. And it was it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Like wh- kind of what your dad was saying before, don't give up on those experiences. It, yeah, it's an investment. You have to do it. Yep. Uh, we went to Ireland and to Italy. So oh, the best wow. Time. Mm-hmm. Which did you prefer? I don't I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. So different. Yeah. Well, the hat you have on is from your honeymoon in That's Ireland, right. right? That's right. Memories. Yeah. A gift to myself. That's right. <laughs> well, and also being parents, just having time alone is, you could put us anywhere. 
it didn't matter what time, where we went. You could have put us in an igloo in Alaska and, you know, would have been the best week I know. I know. of our lives. Yeah. So you need that time. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. In closing, mm-hmm. I would say that I'm really excited to have this platform because we plan on having so many different people, mm-hmm. diff- different vendors, photographers, planners, uh, makeup artists, hair, to really isolate what it is that you're attacking with your own wedding planning to be able to tune in and uh, isolate each moment to see if maybe that you can find some some advice, a uh, better resource to fit us into your busy day. Also, uh, we want to have some guests on of couples, different cultures right. that y- if you are a very specific culture that you can listen to another couple's experience of what the wedding planning was like, what the family's involvement was like, budgeting, venues, how everything came together. So I, I think that will be uh, very helpful to yes. some of our couples. And um, I, I find that that's the most interesting part of this job because, I mean, I just love, I mean, and you, you said, you and I spoke about this. We just mm-hmm. love that connection with people, learning about people. Oh, And that is right. the truth. And when they come in here, um, you see all the differences that go into their their planning. And of course, I'm always comparing it to my own experiences because mm-hmm. what else could I compare it to? But then also I'm looking for things that that unify us, that connect us. For me, that's been the most interesting part of this job, the differences and the similarities. That's right. And learning, it's been educational learning about different different religions, different cultures, yes. what they do to prepare for yes. their weddings. It's really beautiful yeah. what goes on outside of a, a regular white wedding. Mm-hmm. That's so true. So it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely been educational. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm excited to too. constantly grow and learn and talk to people locally and, and from afar bring them into this Mm -hmm. and go take it from there. If you have any questions, feel free to email us podcast at livepicturestudios.com. If you'd like to be a guest, we'd love to have you. Yeah, you may have burning questions that you want us to address on our next podcast. So feel free to email us. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram and hashtag LPS podcast.